The, um, we've talked about the superficial muscles. Um, we're now going to go a little deeper. So I'm removing all of these superficial muscles and go a little deeper. First off, um, here's the scapula like we talked about. This was the rhomboid minor, rhomboid major, supraspinatus, infraspinatus muscle. This muscle right here is attached to the scapula. So that's going to pull the scapula up. And that's called the levator scapulae. Again, that's called levator scapulae. If we go and move a bit more anterior, we see four muscles. One, two, and three. Three muscles, excuse me, one, two, and three. And these right here are termed the scalenes. So this is the posterior scalene, the middle scalene, and the anterior scalene. What some people make the mistake of is they start with this muscle right here and think that that's anterior scalene. That is not, okay? That is not the anterior scalene. That's a different muscle, okay? So we have posterior, middle, and anterior scalenes. The scalenes are actually important in respiration. Okay, they tighten up uh, in people who are having respiratory problems. Um, so that's one of the reasons why they'll get physical therapy sometimes if they're a respiratory patient is for those muscles in the neck. Next, we have this muscle, long muscle right here. Okay, it actually starts here, goes lateral, and then comes all the way up to the inferior part of the, of the skull. And this right here is going to be called the omohyoid. An easy way to remember that is, oh my God, that's a large muscle. Okay, so that's the omohyoid muscle. Um, next, if we look, I'm going to take this rubber band off. If we look, at this right here, okay, we have uh, this muscle right here, which actually comes up to the styloid process. Now remember, the styloid process comes to a point. So you would, you would assume that this muscle is going to come right up to a point. So this muscle here is called the stylo, because it's attached to the styloid process, and then hyoid, because it attaches to the hyoid bone. So this is the stylohyoid muscle, stylohyoid muscle, okay? Next, we have this muscle that's just posterior to it. That is called the digastric muscle, and this is also called the digastric muscle. So we have the digastric muscle here, and we have the digastric muscle here, okay? So this is the what? Stylohyoid, digastric, and digastric muscle, okay? Now, this muscle is pretty easy to remember. If you see that it's attached, this right here is, is the thyroid cartilage in blue. This muscle right here is called the thyrohyoid muscle. Makes sense, right? Because it's attached to the thyroid bone and, uh, excuse me, thyroid cartilage and to the uh, hyoid. So it's called the thyrohyoid muscle. Does everybody get that? Thyrohyoid muscle. Okay. This one right here goes from the sternum, which is right here. Remember the jugular notch? This is that goes from the sternum and it goes all the way up to the thyroid cartilage. So we call it the sternothyroid muscle. So this is the sternothyroid muscle. And this one right here is called the thyrohyoid muscle. Again, this is the thyrohyoid muscle, and this is the sternothyroid muscle, okay? Next, we have the last two muscles of mastication. Remember, we talked about the muscles of mastication. They included the masseter, which was here. They have this muscle right here, which is called the temporalis muscle. Then we have this, these two. We have this muscle right here, which runs in an anterior to posterior direction, and we have this muscle that runs a bit more superior to inferior right here. So this muscle right here, is called the medial pterygoid muscle, and this muscle right here is termed the lateral pterygoid muscle. So we have lateral pterygoid muscle and medial pterygoid muscle. Everybody now know why we went over those medial and lateral pterygoid um, parts, okay? Now, one of the things I'll show you, can I write in somebody's book, whoever's book this is? Can I write in it? Yeah. This is yours? No, it's mine, it's mine. Yours, okay. There's a little picture I just wanna show you in terms of the, if you look right here, the way to remember the difference between the lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid is if I draw the letter L, if I draw the letter L, L okay, notice that the fibers run anterior to posterior, okay, they run that direction, okay. With the medial pterygoid, they run up and down like the letter M, okay. So here is the letter M. Notice how the fibers run up and down. Whereas lateral pterygoid, they run anterior to posterior, posterior to anterior. So there's the letter L and there's the letter M. 
Does everybody understand that? Because that can hopefully help you remember uh, lateral and medial pterygoids. Okay? So those are the muscles that you need, the last set of muscles that you need to know um, for the head and neck. I actually have two more that I want to go over. Um, sorry about that. But this right here is going to be called the splenius capitis muscle. Again, it's called the splenius capitis muscle. And then this one that's tucked right in here is called the semispinalis cap, uh, semispinalis uh, muscle. So this is the splenius capitis and this is the semispinalis. Okay, so splenius capitis and semispinalis. Okay.